Charles Barkley has never wanted to shy away from his from sharing his opinion, right? Now, a lot of the times he can be wrong, but I a thousand percent agree with him on what he's about to say um, on this one. Charles Barkley's had some interesting comments on load management on um, this past week. Charles Barkley talked about how you know he believes that the next CBA talks within the NBA and the Players Association we might possibly see a lockout or something big happen between the owners and the players because there's so many guys taking just games off because of they're sore, they're a little banged up. I believe that one of the big reasons that people love the NBA is that it's extremely player driven, right? We see like it's a it's not like football. We just got done talking NFL. It's not like football where you you they got face masks, you can't really see their face. In the NBA, you're close to the players, you're down there on the court, you can see their face, their brands, they're everywhere. Uh, more guys got shoe deals and endorsements nowadays. The league is built for the big stars, the big stars to shine and, and have their brands um, thrive, right? They get paid a lot of money. It's extremely player driven. But with this comes negatives. And for example, one being load management players just feeling like, hey, I don't have to play today. Or hey, I'm a little sore, hey, I'm a little banged up, I'm not gonna play today in this in this back-to-back. -back. Um, and like I said, most notably, back-to-backs, players don't wanna play, um, whether they're a little dinged up, sore, whatever it may be. My opinion on this isn't the same one that an owner would have, which is like, hey, we're paying you to play 82 games. And if you can play, you should be out there, right? They're thinking about it from a money standpoint, like I'm giving you money, you should, you should be out there playing if you can. Um, my opinion and my stance comes strictly from uh, a fan perspective. It comes strictly from a competitor perspective. You know, fan first, fans pay money. They're paying to go see you and see their favorite players play. You talk about the kids all the time. Oh, oh this kid might have flown in, or you might be going to, you know, Utah. And this might be this kid's only chance to go see Steph Curry play and now you're sitting out. Or, you know, the Clippers are coming into town and you wanna see Kawhi Leonard and Paul George play your favorite team, but now they're sitting out because they're they're a little sore and it might be their back-to-back -back off night. Um, from a fan perspective, that's not giving the fans what they want. And now it's like, okay, well, if, if, he, if, I don't, if I'm not sure he's gonna come, I might not buy this ticket, right? I remember last year going to a T-Wolves game and yes, Clay was back, Draymond was there, but Steph didn't play. And it still, it wasn't the same experience because you want to see Steph, you, you can't be like, he's one of the best players in the league. It was still a great game. You got to see Wiggins come back to, to the target center, but you still want to see Steph Curry and him not being out there kind of took away a little bit from the game. And, um, you know, from a, from a competitor standpoint, right? Now we get up to fan from a competitor standpoint, wouldn't you want to play as many games as you can, right? Um, yes, it's a business and you want to keep your body healthy. You want to see the stars play, you want to see them healthy. If you're injured, yes, yeah, sit out, right? Um, but soreness is not an injury. There are way too many tools, way too much technology nowadays. There's way too many trainers and personal, like for there to be an excuse for soreness and little bruises and stuff to be an excuse not to play. Like I said, from a competitor standpoint, everybody, every year, one of my goals in, in football was to never, never miss a practice, never miss a game. Granted, there's fewer games, but in the NBA, I feel like guys should take it as a badge of honor if you play 82 games in a season, if you're able to, right? If you play all your games, that should be a huge accomplishment. And I just don't understand how people players are, are going to see, they're seeing the GOAT of our generation, LeBron James in year 20 playing the minutes he's played, playing the amount of games he's played. And he's probably played more minutes than anybody's ever played in NBA history with how many times he's gone to the playoffs and to the finals. How can you see him over there in LA doing that in year 20 and you're in year five or six and you feel entitled to a day off? I just don't, I, that doesn't register to me like, shouldn't that inspire you as a competitor to get out there and, and, and play in those games? Um, yes, back-to-back -back suck, especially on the road, but you only get a certain window to play this game of basketball. Like, wouldn't you want to take full advantage of that? Wouldn't you want um, 
to go out there and show everybody what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and consistently. Like, yes, if you're banged up, you're sore, you, it might not be, you know, the easiest to get warmed up. It might You might take you a little bit to get into rhythm, but fans want to see you play. You should want to be out there and play because you never know when your last basketball game is going to be. Um, and like I said, you only get a certain window to play this game and you want to take full advantage of it because when it's gone, it's gone. When you're done, you're done and you're going to look back and be like, man, I wish I had more time. Well, you, you had a few more opportunities that you could have like squeezed everything you had out of that towel, right?